Red Emperor are an iconic species in Queensland. They're great sport fish, they fight well, and they taste absolutely delicious. But they're also a very interesting animal. And in this video, we're going to look at some aspects of the Red Emperor. Red Emperor occur in a, a range of different uh, places. <clears throat> they quite regularly appear in Gladstone Harbour, in fact in uh, the Gladstone Marina. They're found close in shore with a number of other species on rocky reefs and so on. And they also occur well offshore. Their real uh, habitat where they're found most common, I suppose, is the inter-reef zone, so in relatively deeper waters. So they're particularly common close to uh, where there's some weed, where there's some soft corals, in relatively deep water. They don't occur alone. Most of the time when Red Emperor are encountered, they're with other species. So in this one, well, I don't know how many species we've got there. There's lots of them. And they can be in quite large numbers. These are small fish. And there's plenty of them there. So just some of the species there, we've got largemouth nanagai, there were coral trout, there were triggerfish, and a number of others. This is the colour we typically uh, think of with Red Emperor. Quite a, a nice red with vertical bars. Red Emperor can have a number of different colours. If you look closely at this video, there's one uh, larger individual. And you'll notice that he's quite different to the smaller ones. Now this is quite typical. Here he is coming closer to the, the camera now. As they grow larger, they tend to uh, not have as distinct vertical stripes. These are young fish from close in shore and they have the typical government brim colour pattern. So it's supposed to look like the convict's uh, shirt with an arrow facing upwards. Now if we were to look at these fish above water they'd be uh, brilliant white and the stripes would be a brilliant red. Of course, we're underwater here and we're in probably uh, 15 metres of water, so a lot of the red is lost. You might just pick up some of it.
Now, just coming into view is, is a larger individual. And it's not always that the largest ones lose the stripes altogether. It's a little bit more subdued in this one. And he's uh, certainly legal size. Red Emperor quite often have uh, mixed sizes within their schools. So they're not always the same size. Just because they're small ones doesn't mean there isn't uh, a couple of larger individuals in with the group. They're also quite variable in the colour. If you have a look at this one, his tail is quite different. So the normal pattern across his body, but on the tail, He's very dark indeed. And that's just one of the colour variations that, that do occur in this uh, in, in, in uh, Red Emperor. This is a fish from quite deep water, so there's even less colour here, and uh, relatively low light, so that's why it doesn't look uh, as vibrant, perhaps. Fish in the foreground is a trigger fish, but if you look at the Red Emperor in the background, it's quite light in colour, except for the tip of its fins. Now this uh, seems to be relatively common. Here's another one. This is from shallower water, but you can see that although the vertical bars are less distinct, just coming into frame now, he hasn't turned red, he turns actually a, a lighter colour. So there is quite a bit of variation in the colour amongst them. So here he comes, just coming into frame now, there's two of them. It's two side by side. Much more uniform colour, but quite a light colour. So in some cases, they're very dark. And they lose the bars. In other cases, underwater, they're quite light in colour. Here's one a little bit intermediate. Another example, the, the bars have started to fade. This fish is, is uh, certainly legal size, but nowhere near the, the, the vertical bars are nowhere near as bright. The 
as he comes in now. So as they grow larger, they tend to lose the bars. Here's some from closer in shore. This is quite a large fish, but it still has the, the distinct barring. I'm not sure whether this is related to the depth of water or what it is. This is from relatively shallow inshore water. And this, this fish is just over legal size uh, yeah. once again you can see that there's a group of sizes within these this uh, school On the background there, there's, there's quite a large individual, but certainly they don't always lose those bars. <coughs> Moving offshore a little, now this is more typical of what um, people recognise as Red Emperor in the large examples. These are a reasonably large fish, probably seven kilos or so. You can see that the bars have gone, and in between the bars is quite dark. So if this fish was taken above water, it would be certainly that distinct red colour. Once again, there's, there's various sizes within that school. The issues with reef fish is <clears throat> often when they're brought up from deep water they, they don't survive very well. Now within this next sequence I just want to show you within Red Emperor. So what we have here is, is a smaller individual that's actually swallowed a hook. Now someone has released this fish and if you have a look coming from his mouth there's some fishing line. Red Emperor are a, a pretty hardy uh, species. They tend to survive well when you release them. It doesn't seem to matter what depth you release them at, they will survive quite well. So this guy is living quite happily. Uh, I don't know whether I've got the sequence on here, but <clears throat> he was feeding quite happily, living with the group even though he had obviously a hook and some fishing line attached. And it would, he, he'd get rid of that within a relatively short period of time. Not sure where the line came from, 
whether someone's line was broken, uh, whether it was cut off, not sure, but they can survive quite well. Just some more evidence of uh, how they survive well. This fish, if you look closely, has been tagged. So when he turns around, you, you should see the tag just underneath his dorsal fin. Now, a number of Red Emperor have been tagged and released and recaptured, released again. And they seem to survive quite well. So you can see the tag there just below his dorsal fin at the moment. So if you do catch a Red Emperor and it's undersized or surplus to your needs, certainly release them. They do survive very well. Here he is again, there's his tag. In the next sequence, if you look at the smaller fish on the right hand side, you'll see that he has a tag and it's, the, the, it's well grown over just before he was chased away by the large fish. So it's been there for some time. Another example, you see the smaller fish has been tagged. There it is. Red Emperor, another species where there's a, a fairly definite pecking order which seems to go on size. If you watch this large fella here, he's getting a bit sick and tired of the smaller fish around him. He wants to feed, so he starts chasing smaller species and smaller fish away. Once again, you can see he started to lose his stripes. And certainly good sized fish. So yeah, he's not going to put up with anyone else feeding on his, uh, his meal. If you notice, unlike a uh, cod, uh, red emperor will chase other species. So cod tend to just chase other cod, but these guys also chase anything smaller than themselves. Compared to cod and coral trout, red emperor have relatively small mouth. So when they're feeding, they tend to uh, tear pieces off the bait until it's uh, to a size where they can swallow it. So unlike a cod that tend to take the whole bait in their mouth, these guys will bite small chunks off. You notice also they seem to have a preference for the head of the bait. So when they're feeding, Quite often that's their preferred uh, part of the, uh, of a, say, a pilchard like we've got here. Okay, you can see the cod. He tends to grab the whole thing. Red emperor tend to grab either the head or just behind the head in the gut. 
that seems to be their main preferred part certainly not right on the tail here we've got a large bait and once again these guys are feeding in the gut cavity that's uh, where they tend to go that was a cod he'd be trying to eat the whole thing 